What's good, my people? This is episode five of the Walk a Mile in My Shoes podcast. Me, your host for today, Nathaniel James. Yeah, I have a special guest with me that goes by the name of Ryan Campbell. Yes, yes, nice my brother. You, brother. Respect, nice man. You. Thank you for coming through. Yeah, this is the fifth episode. So, just for the viewers, just a brief little description of yourself, your background, and then we can go into the interview. Okay, so um, yeah, I'm just a Birmingham lad, born and bred, and um, background is um, as of from a young age, I was involved in like not you, I suppose your normal lifestyle compared to um, I suppose what what society would call normal, but if you in terms of where we grew up, um, I wouldn't say normal, but. I'd, I'd say it was your typical lifestyle, meaning um, a lot of basically, what would you call it? You'd call it like organized crime, okay. alpha male shit, money, okay. um, being the main important thing, money, status, clothes, cars, all that kind of stuff. So kind of like fast, fast lane living. Yeah, just living like that. The way a lot of these kids are coming up now, and like they seem to be glorifying a lot of it in the music. Yes. And um, that that was how I, how I um, grew up. Like I just gravitated towards it when I was a kid. Um, okay. So so okay. So when you was a kid and stuff like that, like school. How how was school life? How was teenager life for you? School life. Um, to be honest, mate. <laughs> he, he, I, 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 he started off as like uh, he, you, he might come as a surprise. Yeah, that I, I was bullied in school. Okay, you see? Uh, and um, cause I was a very quiet kid. Do okay, you know, do you yeah. know what I mean, I was a quiet, like a bit of an introvert. Yeah, yeah, okay. And, and um, I suppose be coming from a family that didn't really have a lot of money, and that I suppose maybe th- that can stand out okay do you know what I mean yeah um, yeah from from the others yeah, yeah I, I can't obviously it's a long time ago isn't it? I'm 37 yeah. now but I can't really put a specific study but I know I used to get bullied when I was in school and there was a point in time when there was a switch in my mind when it was like it's almost and this is weird because you can think about it when you you know when you see movies and you see <laughs> like like a character or yeah, a sort of yeah. like um, something happens and then that person changes completely yeah. into beast mode or whatever or like it's just a complete U-turn and that's what happened And I so just, sorry sorry to just stop you there because that is kind of like one of the questions that I wanted to ask like have yeah. you been through any traumatic experience so was there something that happened like kind of in childhood that caused that switch or was it just due to you being bullied and you thought you know what that's it now like I'm not having it no more I'm going to stick up for myself yeah, yeah. I mean, um, I went through a lot of trauma when I was a kid. Probably certain things that probably best not really to. I wouldn't really want to talk about. It. That's quite personal. But like, um, yeah, I think it was just there was a point in school where it wasn't even in school, mate. I think it, to, to be honest with you, it was um, there was something happened between someone who was a friend of mine. Um, and um, it's like I, I I used to get like our group it was like a rough group it? okay yeah, yeah yeah but I used to be the one who like got like the the, the lads would be like shut up you know like that yeah and, yeah and, and, and like you know like threaten me and I'd be yeah. quiet about it yeah yeah and then something happened where, where I was having a party at my house when my mum went on holiday and one of the kids who was like was old? He was kind of like my cousin, mm. like very close family friend. But um, he'd stole something from my house, and uh, I was always scared of him. And then one day I just I just I said fuck this, sorry for swearing. That's right. cool, yeah. But I just turned around and just went and just just battered battered the head off him. And then it, it was it, it was that point in my head something changed because, like, I noticed that. Like whoa! Like the only thing that's like making you fear these these lads is you. Yeah, Do you know yeah, what I mean? yeah. And so then that that, that set off a chain reaction. Then like okay. it's mad. It was like for, I I didn't turn into like a, a nasty person, but like 
I had the potential to be. Okay. Meaning like it was like that was never gonna happen again. That yeah, thing yeah. was never gonna happen. So kind of like if someone triggered you, like yeah, the, 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 it, you're gonna get you're gonna get, like, you're gonna get what you want. Like, like evil Stewie, any yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Know, family guy. Was <laughs> yeah. Like, like I've always been like a nice, calm, placid person. Yeah, but then that. Like I realised that there was a beast inside, mm-hmm. ready to come out, mm. and, and 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 I was like, I liked it because yeah, I'm yeah. like, you know what? Like there was a time when I used to get bullied and, mm. and I didn't feel good. It didn't yeah, feel nice yeah. to get bu- like feel like a like um like I suppose a runt of the pack. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean, and it, it, when we grow up in like in the city areas, um, this 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 is something that can influence you in it. Um, uh, especially you know if 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 your environment is telling you that, like, you know, for instance, the guys with the got nice clothes, the guys um, that, you know, are the leaders of the pack, mm. those are the ones who can have more social interaction with mm. girls and things like that. The yeah. more the desirable characters, yeah, yeah, any, yeah. 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 Um, that, that you're being fed that a lot of the time on TV. Mm. You're being fed it, like, just basically from other people's kind of, the way people, Ah, because mm. they respect you more. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or it seems that way. Um, but is, when when you're in that situation, it can kind of like dent your confidence in a lot of things. Do you know what I mean? You know, like when you feel like you probably had times where you look back and thought, "I should have spoke up then." But you know yeah, what? Yeah. If that happens again, when you, that switch happened, you kind of probably have processed all the other things and thought, "Okay, if that happens again." Now I know how to deal with it and obviously from that time it would have mm. been like you know just standing up for yourself and, and stuff like that yeah. but like obviously so when all of that happened and that shaped and you fought that guy and you beat that guy where did you where did you measure up then in the pack like did you did you go up a little because you get them yeah. hierarchies don't you from that point I'm with you I just like I said it's something made me to realise that like it's, that's it I'm alpha male now there's yeah no, there's, no, there's not no in between <laughs> yeah yeah do you know what I mean it's like if anyone's got a problem then it's getting dealt with yeah, yeah. on site even, even if it's a even if it's a like hint of a problem mm-hmm. some, that's what I mean like when you once you start going into that kind of it's funny because I kind of like I studied a, I've, I've started to change like was, you know um, the the way I was thinking like as because obviously as you know I went to jail and all this yeah stuff. we can touch on that yeah, after, yeah. yeah once I started to change I started looking into psychology and stuff mm-hmm. it's funny how you can switch from being a really nice placid calm person mm-hmm. and then like something pushes you meaning it's like I've had enough of this. Mm-hmm. And then you get pushed into that, whatever you want to call it, like it's maybe something else takes over you, another mm-hmm. character, because mm-hmm. I, I'm interested in these kind of things, the psyche and all that, how how you, your mind can how, pull you. Into. How did you feel? Like, how did you, when, when you knew, because obviously in that, in, in all, in all, when I look at it, it's like, you you got you had potential in it, yeah, but you yeah. didn't know your potential. Whether that was physical or to look after yourself, you was mm. quite introverted. Yeah, yeah, then yeah. when you knew your potential, did it inflate your ego and make you feel like indestructible, or yeah. was you or was you a fair character with it? Was it kind of like you sticking up for the ones who don't have a voice like yourself, yeah. or was it? I oh, know I've got power now, and I can just use this to my benefit to better situations, to better my living yeah, um, yeah. surroundings. I just realised that there was just there's no fear in it. Yeah. I, I can't remember. I can't remember completely because I was a I was a young child at that yeah, time. Yeah, I, yeah. I just I suppose I remember the saying, "Young, dumb, and full of cum." So yeah. like, you, you're not really thinking now. Uh, yeah, you just, yeah. You just you just know that like if there's a situation that um so that you might might want to. It might benefit you to get into. This could be to do with getting money in terms of whatever it is, like activities that you might want to get involved in. This could be do with like if somebody's um, encroaching on your respect um, or any kind of situation where many people would fear not to go. Mm. You're ready to go there now. You Mm. know this. So like I I wouldn't say like I would... I would say, yeah, I, I wouldn't say I turned into a bully after that mm. or anything like that. So I must have been fair. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I didn't turn into someone who's going to go around causing problems. Yeah. But 
it was just because I don't know about yourself, but I always knew, especially when I was younger, when somebody feared me, and I always used to try and go the extra mile to make them understand that, yo, bro, whatever you're thinking of me, that ain't me. Like, I'm not here to yeah. impose or threat or rob your phone or bully you. Do you know what I mean? I was mm. the kind of person where I always wanted to stick up for people. And if you had that, like, the runt of the pack would be my best friend because yeah. I was never bullied. Do you know what I mean? And I was always respected. So if I brought that young person or that, or that, run in the pack with me automatically my respect rubs onto there so if they're yeah. seeing down the road the ones in the lower years that might terrorise him will know now oh no that's Nathaniel's peeps oh he, he hangs around with the popular lads so I, I, I took on that role where I was more of a nurturer but I knew in, inside of me if I wanted to be I could be that horrible imposing character where if a man looks at me and, and looks to the side oh you dickhead come here and the, do you know what I mean I knew it yeah. so I made sure within my Myself, that I didn't impose like impose people in a way where I'd f- make them feel intimidated do you yeah, know what I'm saying yeah, so it's yeah. nice to know that you know obviously yeah you said you was introverted you said that certain things happen but you didn't use your power to be like oh like that runt now you're my you know what I mean like, now yeah, you're yeah. my runt I'm going to send you to the shop all of that kind of thing do you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying and that yeah. happens quite a lot and those people that go through that they're, they're the ones that when they grow older they're mad because mm-hmm. they're like yo you don't whatever they'll go to the gym they get wham they see that person from school mm-hmm. and they want to move to them do you know what I'm saying yeah, yeah, so obviously the conversation that we had touched upon you know that you went to jail and stuff At what have you been to jail numerous times or have you been just the one time yeah so I went only for small offences like driving charges and things like that and is that um, a young age or adulthood? Yeah, when I was like 17. Okay. And um, see what it was, because I used to go to, to, to prison for like six weeks, mm-hmm. three months. Yeah. And you just think, ah, I'm, I'll be, I go there, smoke some weed, play PlayStation, get out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it was never kind of anything that really touched upon my life in a way that um, would influenced me to feel like something's got to change yeah 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 because it was just a little tap a little yeah, tap on the reset yeah. a couple of weeks and, and i was progressing like as a lot of these young kids do into like making money like mm-hmm. a lot of money yeah um and it's like you get money and you think all right six months in jail i'm too smooth for this mm. long term jail shit yeah, so yeah. You're, in your head you're thinking I ain't gonna go jail for that long time. Mm. or you're thinking the money's worth it it's worth the yeah, risk uh, yeah. um, like cause yeah like I said young dumb and full of come so <laughs> at the time you're thinking I'll be retired by the time like this was my thoughts mm. I'll be retired by the time I get like sucked for anything big okay you know what I mean? yeah 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 um but the young, dumb and full of cum thing catches up because, um, especially with lads who get a propensity for violence mm. because the police want them gone. Mm-hmm. They, mm-hmm. Like there will be people out here who are doing a lot, making a lot, making a lot of money, serving mm-hmm. up a lot of food or whatever. Yeah. But it's like sometimes they get away with it and it might be because they're talking to police or whatever yeah who knows but like i i genuinely think a lot of the time it's because they're not like getting caught up in violence okay the lads are really violent they Mm. want them gone yeah 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 um and because they deem them that you're you're a massive threat to society yeah they're the ones that normally get ipp and stuff any yeah and also i think you you start getting it's like uh you like the saying you see red Mm. so you just go from one thing to another to another and when you see in red it's like you're kind of not really thinking too too much you're leading you get you're stuck in your your emotional anger kind mm-hmm. of like mm-hmm. place of like state of mind yeah, you know what i mean yeah. and that and you kind of living now that's ruling you in some 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 ways um because I, I kind of believe that um the more you head towards a certain kind of like um, let's say program or way of thinking, yeah. The more that is gonna show up in in your life. So mm-hmm. if you're like kind of you know getting angry a lot or re- resulting to violence, then 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 generally I believe the the 
the the the the circumstances, the situations, the kind of people that um, are gonna like stir that up, so to speak, mm-hmm. um, will t- what turn up in your life. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Um, you you manifest it, innit? Yeah, I mean, it, it's a bit of that. I think it's a bit of that. I think it's and 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 then you're not then because you, you're not thinking straight, then you're gonna lose out eventually. You're gonna go to jail. Because mm. a lot of times, not a lot of times, but sometimes people go to jail, and it is because of that. They've seen the red mist and all of that kind of stuff. Do you know what mm. I mean? They've acted off pure anger and emotion, and then it's only until after when they're in jail and they've they've calmed down now and they're understand the surroundings and then the severity of oh I've got to do a life sentence that's when it all hits home to them isn't it? and it's mm. kind of like wow that one action has caused this reaction now and the choices that are made now this is the consequence and not many people want to face that consequence do they and, mm-hmm. and, and but and then when they do face it, that's when they're having these breakdowns, they're suicidal, they don't want to be here, this and that, they're crying in the cell. And that's the side that is not glorified. Because I feel like if that side was glorified, the whole, every action has a reaction, every choice you make now is going to consequent, is going to have a massive consequence in your life. I feel like a lot of people will think more, but obviously with your circumstance, so you had a, a few minor offences and stuff like that, Like, but you had one main offence that you had mm. to do a lot of time for. Do you know what I mean? Would you, you okay to, to speak about that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Touch upon it. So, um, basically what happened was we went to um, a Halifax bank, moved to the security guard, he was bringing the money into the place mm-hmm. and um, we let off shots, shot the geezer because just it was it was a situation where it was in the main town centre, it was getting very kind of like heated and, mm-hmm. and like it was just getting a bit a bit mad because, yeah, on top, yeah. yeah um, one, basically where this was, it was in Wales, okay. these people had never seen nothing like this yet. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. the, what what had happened was the one of the guys who's like some kind of rugby guy or some of these people some of them even said they thought it was a TV show oh, wow. do you know what I mean so one of them tried to wrestle my co-defendant so then quite a long story short it got very violent and I ended up going to prison for 12 years okay. um, at that time see the funny thing is is that I always like to pride myself at that I was doing things on a military kind of like mindset, mindset yeah, like yeah. a mastermind. And yeah. I, I, if I look back, like I can't say that I wasn't. I was, like I used to, everything. I used to do it all specifically. No phones. Mm. Like and this was back then. Yeah, like, yeah with, so When the phones weren't even as dangerous yeah, as yeah. they are now. Yeah, yeah. Like you, on the day, there would be no phones. Mm-hmm. I would just meet you at this place. If you wasn't there, you wasn't there. Yeah, mm-hmm. it would be like. You know, I have diff- like next set of clothes with me. Straight away, he's getting burnt. As soon as I drive around the corner, he's getting burnt. Mm-hmm. His clothes cost two pound. Yeah, you know yeah, I mean, yeah. I got a book sack with the clothes. I just cost nothing. I mm-hmm. went to the market, all that kind of shit. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I used to stay at a place where no one knew where I lived. Okay. Like, no one knew where I lived. Do you know mm-hmm. what I'm trying to say? Like, all this kind of stuff. Yeah. Where did you and learn then, this? Was it, or, or was this? You just start reverse engineering things in your mind, and you start thinking. It's like a, a lot of things that I even do now because I do do. I've changed it up, and I do half and wellness now. Mm. Um, but you reverse engineer things in your brain and think to yourself, like this is how I need to move because X Y Z because I'm looking at all you know the the, the holistic kind of picture. Mm. Yeah. Um, but you see, the thing what happened was uh, I lost a lot of money, a large amount of money, yeah. Okay. Um, and um, this led to me, my thinking was fractured. Like, I, 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 it's funny because even though the whole time, like, leading up to it, I used to be methodical. I mean, I'd be in the car with guys, yeah, and they're, they're, they're doing dumb shit. They're, like, like, top lads and that. They know what they're doing, but doing mad stuff like smoking weed in the car mm. they want to go to pull up like sometimes like we're fucking driving around the sofa swaying again we're driving yeah. around on like um random ones and um 
they want to pull up at McDonald's. I'm hiding in the back. I'm like, what are you doing? But the point that I'm making is I always felt, felt like I was thinking on a different level mm. yet. But something can happen and that 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 kind of mindset can shift and you can let that go. Mm-hmm. As, especially when you're living in a... Like, I don't know, it's mad because like that lifestyle is so high kind of high speed high octane mm. so dangerous yeah is that all it takes is for you to be maybe possessed by a different kind of spirit or that mm. like because we all have days when we're like whoa what come over me what was i thinking like this year yes right? um so all it takes is for a shift in your mind for you to not be thinking the the the, the way for you to be one step ahead mm-hmm. and then and then and then you're gone because um what happened was Back to the story, um, a large amount of my money went missing, and it was a family member oh. who who was suspected of, and okay. then and then, like, there's certain parts of this I ain't even going to talk about yet because no, it's too, mad, yeah. but yeah, yeah. like it got real deep. My head was like just literally just all over the place. So I started smoking a lot of weed. Now okay. I literally had like a big bag of weed on me all the time now. And in my head, because I lost like a large amount of money, and I think I must have lost like, I lost 50,000 50, pounds, which I, I, like 15 years ago mm. was like a lot in it for yeah, a little yeah. kid to have <laughs> yeah. And then, and then, and then like in that same week, um, I lost a, I lost a car that was worth like a 10 grand, got chased by the police. Mm. And um, a bunch of like stuff that was in the car, and then and then and then um, what else was it like? I just I ended up with like hardly any money compared to what I was like. Yeah, what I you was, like, used I was, to. I was nice yeah. in it, and then all yeah. of a sudden I'm like, I've got nothing. So then I started thinking like acting out of the ordinary. I got loads of weed on me, which I never used to smoke, especially if I'm out doing mm. bits and bobs. Yeah, um, and like I'm just not thinking clear in it so and I'm quite angry so it, like in my head I'm thinking unless I get like 10 times the money that I've just lost there yeah, yeah. I'm not happy you're not happy because that's how I was driven so losing that cloud did your judgment any of the way you was thinking yeah, moving yeah, forward yeah, yeah yeah and and I wasn't like thinking as surgical I wasn't thinking as like a methodical yeah yeah I just like I thought I know what I'm doing anyway I'll get that money back rapid yeah and I, w- I went on a mission back to get back the money okay right but, but I wasn't sticking to the rules that I was usually applying to myself mm. then like with, within a few weeks time I was in handcuffs like I did get like a fair bit of the money back what what um what you lost yeah but by that time I was in handcuffs on the way back down to um to to Wales to face the charge of like attempted murder and um armed robbery so when you was on the way back down there because like he says you you always said you had that mastermind way of thinking and stuff yeah, like yeah. that and you only got a slap on the wrist did you think that you was going to, like, kind of boss case? Yeah, yeah, I thought I was going to get out because my solicitor was saying to me, he says, listen, you, you're going to beat this charge, man. He goes, don't worry. Um, and for looking at the evidence at the time, I thought I would beat it. But what happened was over the space of, like, nearly two years of being on remand, they they built their case around us. And, okay. and um just kind of there, was a, yeah, there, 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 there was a bunch of things what what ended up making me to get caught. You know what I'm trying to say? Like and that was it. Like twelve years. I got I got twelve years. Like it was ten years IPP, and then I had to do twelve. Like I done full twelve years. Yeah. So full twelve. So that's. Really, I'm glad that you mentioned the IPP because I do have a friend that's on IPP at the moment. And obviously, a lot of people don't know about like IPPs. Mm. Could you kind of like ex- ex- explain like what that term means when they put you on the IPP? Yeah, so so it's, it's like they put you in jail, and um, they just basically say um, you're on a parole sentence, which means you're going to face a board after a certain amount of time, a parole board, and then after that amount of time, we'll decide whether you get get out whether you've changed um in significantly enough to be so able how to did the test to see if you if you've reformed it's generally based on whether you've done certain courses but the the, the 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 problem was at the time yeah they bought this um 
this this sentence in without um without producing any courses that would measure yes. the 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 viability of the prisoner to be um deemed worthy of release so okay. um the whole time that I was in um it, it was along with many other people that was under that sentence you was constantly being um basically pushed from pillar to post with, with the whole thing of um well we don't know if we're going to be able to get you out on time for for your for your decat or for you for you be open prison or to even get your parole because um the there's, there's the, the, the the they've only just bought the course out what you need to do to and this out. course is at this prison and there's a massive weight in this because of the way that we've structured the sentence so it was literally just basically like being placed in a black hole mm -hmm. and just set, told like you you sorry but we we've mismanaged this whole system of the way we're sentencing people and we'll it's just the way it is. So when you, you know I mean? when you went onto the course, like what 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 was the course like? What did you have? What are the kind of things that you had to do? Just psychological things, um, like um, learning the ripple effect of your offences and um, putting yourself in a position of all the other people that are affected by your offences. But here's the thing, though, because what happened on my sentence, which was generally what happened on a lot of people's sentences, they'd put you on one course and then they'd reevaluate you and go, oh, no, we, we actually, that course is not valid anymore. We, we don't think it's valid for you. We're going to put you on this other course, but this course hasn't come out yet. So we, you and you're going to have to go to this prison to do it. Uh, and it, that takes like, you know, so when you long. do the course at the other prisons, do you have to go. Do you have to vacate to that prison as well? Or is yeah, it yeah, yeah, yeah. So you got to move to another prison. You'd and you got to get on the cell. waiting list. Yeah, like all these crazy stuff. So that was a lot to like contend with and cope with. Um, and a lot of people at the time would even would commit suicide or just go crazy because yeah. it's like, yo, what? Well, I don't even know when I'm getting out. Mm. And some of them weren't even do in there for serious offences. Like it was serious, but yeah, yeah. it wasn't the serious in compared to like how long they was ending up doing prison do you know yeah, what I mean because yeah. um, some some people have, have ended up doing like longer than me mm -hmm. and and they haven't the, 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 they haven't done the crime that um, like nowadays would um, be deemed s s to be sufficient for the person to, to go to jail for that long so okay so you crazy. finished so you finished the course and everything you, you had to do the full 12 years yeah, yeah but yeah. describe the feeling when when they said to you you know what you're gonna you're gonna, you're gonna come out now like do you know what I mean did, yeah, did, yeah. Do, do they brief and prompt you and be like give you kind of like a, um I don't know because I always feel like when people come out of jail they don't get that support Mm. Uh, or do you know what I mean? Because obviously, be I, I know that you've committed offence, an, mm. an offence. But if somebody's in a in a in a box room, do you know what I mean? Four walls for twelve years. You can't just throw them out into society and then expect them to just carry on and crack on with the life. Because mm. a lot. When my friend came out the one time after doing three years, he found it hard to just go to the shop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Change. I don't know what's what. I don't know. It was so much for him where he he just says to me like, "Yo, I don't even want to be out on road." It yeah, was yeah. it was um institutionalized then. Yeah, I mean that's that's that, that's the thing when it can happen. Um, you know, I I'll I'll be honest with you. Um, like I obviously like I've done twelve years all the way, and 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 I've saw people with less than twelve years come come out and they're just like their heads are fried because mm. the whole of society is. Um, changed quite a bit not only that um, you know we, you're dealing with immature mindset anyway because you probably even stayed at home mm. never dealt with certain things like uh, bills or shit like that even if you did deal with this like you, you probably just like lived with your chick yeah you pay that yeah, like, yeah. I'm dealing with that you yeah. pay. so it's like to come out and have to start from scratch and have to deal with all these paperwork, government, mm. signing forms. Plus, it's all changed now because it's it's online and mm. society is different. People are acting different. All this kind of stuff. It can have a massive effect. Like I won't say that I'll come out and completely like everything's been cushy for me. Um, 
you know, it's a, it's a, it's a process, man. Definitely after 12 years, there's a lot of issues that I've had to contend with. Um, so yeah, it's crazy. And, and it's, it's definitely traumatic. It's, it's, it's a, tra it's a traumatic thing as well as going mm -hmm. in there, coming out. It's a traumatic thing because like, it's good because, but it depends on it because me, I was just like, I came out and I was going straight to like nightclubs and that. Mm. I didn't even care. Like, so some of like it hit, obviously hit me in different ways and mm. at different phases and times. Um, but you just wanted to just go and enjoy yourself. Was I just that, came was out and say, literally so. from home leave straight into to nightclubs, straight into like festivals and everything. My mate was like, you know, how how are you doing this? And he goes, he goes, I've got more anxiety than you. And I'm like, bro, I've been waiting 12 years. Yeah, <laughs> no time like the present, yeah, man. You yeah, got yeah, a lot yeah. of catching up to but do. But it did, it did catch up with me. It's funny because it caught up with me about a, a, a year later, yeah. Um, and uh, I think it was a mixture of the, the maybe like um, realizing like, wow, where am I going with my life and all this stuff, yeah. And a bunch of other stuff, a bunch of other things. Um, but, but it's good that you said that because that's where we can no you carry on what you're saying but that's where we can go on to yeah, like yeah. what you're doing with yourself now but carry on what okay. you were saying sorry nah because what happened was uh, um, I got look you see what it is for me yeah I was lucky I came out on a high I came out and and my you know my family had a bit of money there yeah put down my people was like yeah listen we know you don't want to have go straight into no job. You've been in jail twelve years, so bum me out. You're nice, and here mm. take some peas. Um, just he bought, you know, bought a little car and that. You know what I mean? Just chilling, like got a nice place to stay. So it's like living in a dream world, isn't it? I've just mm. come out and like everything's there for me that I need. Okay. Yeah. Um, and you know, there's a person who might be watching this now. He knows who he is, man. Got nothing but like just. It's like I can't even express the amount of love. That it is that like for that he made that happen, mm -hmm. but uh, what happened was a year down the line, I'd got so used to being comfortable and just chilling uh, that I didn't, I weren't making any serious decisions about well maybe I need to get a job or maybe I need to start a business or whatever. Yeah, yeah I wasn't yeah. making them serious decisions about what I needed to do, and um, you know uh, I suppose the the dream was starting to wear a bit thin, do you know okay. what I mean? And and, and I, I, I'd met a girl and I fell in love with her and like completely, like, I, like I'd like i never ever fell in love with no girls, like, do you know what I mean? Mm. I was I thought I was in love with a girl who I was with for three years before I went to jail. But like, you know, it's different when you actually, like something happens and you go, whoa, like the whole of life is different now. Yeah. Like the whole, <laughs> uh, uh, the whole of reality mm, feels outlook. different. Outlook, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because I've met this person. And and it was like literally an overnight thing, yeah. Um, but that 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 kind of like it lasted. It was like a amazing like sh short like lived thing, and it just fizzled out traumatically. Mm -hmm. And and um, then that led me to start questioning my life, like thinking, yo, like, what was I good enough for or anything for that girl? Do mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Yeah, and was yeah. this a wake up call or something like that? Yeah. And 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 um, yeah, so that that was that, and then um, I started heading down these paths of like researching because um, I was heavily into vegetarianism and and, okay. and started trying to be a vegan and all this kind of stuff. I was going down that path mm. and uh, thinking that like the more I went on that path, the more I would be able to like get into this like h harmony and like kind of like peace. good vibes yeah, and inner yeah. peace and all that yeah mm. and it, it like to be honest with you i felt energized from being a vegetarian and all this kind of stuff and it felt great and i was like doing the thing of like i, I still do it like cleaning my water because i believe the water's like, got yeah. stuff in there that shouldn't be in there yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so do you filter it or yeah i got, got, got a water distiller and that oh, yeah, so nice. I, I i started doing all this stuff yeah but to be honest with you, it like it, I, nothing felt the way I felt than when I was with that girl that because I fell in love with her, bro, mm. like in love. Do you know what I mean? So I suppose I was doing all that to try and fill a void and feel mm -hmm. more powerful and feel more like, you know, l like I don't know, like just like as if like I could take on the world, any. Yeah, um, yeah. And she she made me to feel that way because to be honest with you. Um, she was a powerful person 
So, you know, when you think to yourself, wow, like, I've attracted that person into my life. Maybe she's there to show me that I need to level up. Mm-hmm. So I was still doing, I was I was, do, I was doing things. I was throwing these parties, these uh, uh, rave music events, but I just felt like I wasn't doing enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know still had a yearning for more, to, to, to do more. Or well, well, yeah, because financially, the parties weren't working out. The fi- like, we was building a wicked name for ourselves, yeah. We've been doing it for, like, over a year at that point, yeah. Mm. It was just starting to blow, but financially it costs a lot of money and time and effort yeah. Yeah, yeah so that's what started me to question like where am i going where am i heading what am i doing like i need to take things more seriously and all this kind of stuff yeah and um so that was that really bro and then but so i went deep into the to the vegetarianism and the vegan uh and then i just came back i took a step back from it all and, and that do you know what i mean and uh so ended up getting a job and the funny, the crazy thing about that is, though, is after going through all these different types of jobs, thinking that was the thing that I needed to do, because um, I've, I've always wanted to be my own man. So that's what I started doing music. Yeah, mm-hmm. like I thought, yeah, this would blow up, and I'll be. That's what I'll do. Um, but that started taking more time. So I thought, all right, let's get a job. The job thing is never ever. I'm not. I'll be. I can be completely honest. I've never resonated with it because I. I feel like I'm. I'm, fueling somebody else's idea. Mm-hmm. So. I I was doing it. I was going through these different jobs. I'm building sites. Wasn't really happy with it. I'm in and out of jobs. Um. I finally found one that I was comfortable with, and then the coronavirus thing happened, didn't it? Oh, okay. So then. So what, so what now, job was that? I was just like, I was roofing. Okay. But it was very easy work. It was just like a labourer. I was getting £125 an hour a, a day. Okay. Right. And um, just literally all I was doing was like laying these these boards, just like here, I pass the board to the guy. The guy does like, just burns them onto the, the roof. That was it. I was loving it. I was like, even though, because I finished at three o'clock in the afternoon, I was, I was like, you know what, even though like, psh, it's not where I see myself, where I'm at in my consciousness, in my brain. I won't be my own boss, innit? Yeah, yeah. But I thought this will work for me for now. Because obviously when you finish at three, then you've got enough time then to Since, focus on yeah, all the other that's passions right, that's that you right. have and stuff like that. Mm. So, so, so with the, 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 the well-being and stuff like that, um, would you say that, you was inspired by going into that through having that experience with the girl or was you already looking into like about when you was re so you said that you researched mm. do you know what i mean have you always been into research or was it a certain thing that happened that sparked you to want to research more about the body and the society and, um, and stuff well i was always a reader in prison okay. um I suppose it can be, a, you, I think you learn the most from observing mm-hmm. everything around you. And mm-hmm. I used to look at, uh, so I'd read a lot of books and I'd read books about, you get these books that say that, um, everything is energy in it. Mm-hmm. So I kind of like started reading these books and, and looking into the law of attraction and all this kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. And um, like I, I used to look and think to myself, do you know what? If everything's energy, because I started making um, like making music and playing guitar as well, okay. so I was thinking, oh, this is all vibration, yeah, energy's yeah, all vibration. Yeah. So then I started thinking to myself, well, if that's how it is, then the stuff that I put in my body, okay. that, that that's obviously like, because I used to think, how how is it that people are getting ill? I couldn't figure it out. Like the funny thing is, I used to watch the news about epidemics and pandemics mm. and think, this is all a bunch of like rubbish. Like yeah, I just yeah. watch pen- pandemics. Every now and again, there'll be like stars flu and all this kind of stuff and pig flu and whatever mm, they call it. Yeah. Yeah. I think, how come every now and again there's a pandemic? But from what my understanding of a pandemic is, is that like everybody's like about to get wiped out, mm. right? Now, maybe that's me exaggerating it in my head, but that's what I used to think in jail. Then when I used to see vegetarians, like I used to ask them questions and I used to think what I'll put in my body obviously matters. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So then... Then, um, I was, yeah, like every vegetarian I used to speak to say, listen, since I went vegetarian, I, I ain't been like, had a, a like ill day since. And this is people in jail who okay. was vegetarian. 
so the food's crap mm. rubbish in there do you know what i mean it's not like you're getting organic vegetables yeah, yeah yeah so i didn't choose to go vegetarian while i was in prison i choose to start to try to be a vegetarian when i come out okay because of it like i just thought it's too limited in prison what yeah you can yeah have. what you can have so then i started to do that um felt really good started to feel fresh vital more younger and um yeah, I just was going down that path there and I went quite deep into it. There's a lot that I, I, I know about it. I've just set a website up to do with it all to help people to learn um, how to like bet, better fuel your body and how to make your, just like your internal system work better. What, what What's your, the name of your website? Um, it's called Spectrum Superfuels. Okay, Spectrum Superfuels. Make sure people lock into that. But we'll also put the link in yeah, the description cheers, as well cheers. so people can look into it and stuff like that so mm. is that is that is, is that where your your passion lies now like what is your 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 aspirations for that it's crazy bro because like i've always wanted to do something um that i thought to myself you know what this this stuff here yeah, can help people we're learning a lot that um the medical system don't seem to be functioning that well like mm-hmm. that everything that they're offering what costs a lot of money yeah, yeah. doesn't seem to be giving out the result that reflects the money that it costs. Okay. Like he, he's costing billions, mm. right? He's earning billions from massive companies, yeah. Um, and for me, I'm like, well, I don't see the the correlation with the health of the people that he's supposed to be treating. Yeah. So yeah. I used to think this in jail. I used to, like, I used to be in prison and think, like, how is it that they got cancer? got all these like diabetes all these different things and you're telling me we can't cure it mm. you're telling me this we are the smartest we are the most like powerful beings on the planet mm-hmm. like that we the you know the, the the we're the most powerful beings that we know of on this mm-hmm. planet right and we can't we don't know how this happens and are you telling me after 30 years of age everything just starts going like south mm. like you you, you, your bones start hurting. Back starts you, hurting. Everything's <laughs> just like seizing it's up. just seizing up. Mm. Like you, 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 you might even. So I used to watch programs. I see people getting like um, dementia. You see, oh, you, we used to watch like the soaps in there, innit? Yeah, yeah. So you yeah, see, yeah, on, yeah. on um, I remember watching like Emmerdale or something like that. The geezer gets dementia, and I'm thinking, nah, this can't be. It's mad because jail makes you be able to think. So I mm. think this this is not how it works. This is not how it works. This isn't. And then I used to get a lot of uh, DVDs on the USB sticks, like oh, the documentaries yeah, and that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we were watching all like loads of different things. And I, I remember I was watching things about a geezer called Rick Stimson or Simpson, and he's he healed his own cancer with cannabis oil. Okay. And then he's seen a lot of other people healing each other, like healing this one woman healed her child with cannabis oil. How long ago was that that you that you watched that? This was like in 2015 or something. Okay, yeah, okay. Because yeah. it's, it's massive now, isn't it? Like yeah, in, in yeah, terms yeah. of, like, there's been a lot of people now know about it, but mm. beforehand nobody knew about it. Yeah. And then obviously begs to differ, like how long did the people at the top know about this? Because yeah, if sure. they did know about this, then all of the cancer research and all that money that they've been getting, why hasn't mm. it been put into, oh, let's, let's um you know, let's um, focus on cannabis oil because we know that this can definitely cure and it doesn't have that many bad side effects yeah, as, yeah. as what chemotherapy and stuff like that. It has a lot of side mm. effects that comes with it as well, doesn't it? Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. So do you, do, do, do you feel like um the reason why they wouldn't endorse a lot of money and stuff like that in there is because they'll lose out on money on the other side of the pharmaceutical company of do you know what i mean of the chemo and all of that kind of stuff because it costs a lot of money doesn't it i see yeah, a lot yeah. of people that try and fundraise because they're being told that they're on a waiting list to get chemotherapy do you yeah, know what i mean yeah, yeah. so if that if it's costing a lot of money to do that and there is alternatives why do you think that they're not delving into them alternatives I'd say that there's no two ways about it, yeah. It's the money involved in the treatment of the cancers, yeah. And it's the money involved in the, the drugs for the diabetes and the drugs for all these different ailments, yeah. It's the money or it, it's the money involved that is the reason why that um for whatever reason, like I don't wanna say what it is, I'm not gonna hear to i I'm not here to say it's a conspiracy, it's this and that, mm-hmm. because I don't know. Mm. Like I 
I, I was researched into all these different things, yeah, and it'll send you a bit bonkers, right? Yeah, yeah. The thing is, it's like, you'll never know any, but one thing we can look at, right, because people always go, well, where's your science? Where's your evidence? Where's this and that? Like, I look at it like this. I see a lot of money being made, mm -hmm. right? And I see not a lot of people being healed. I see the, the, the doctors who go, yeah, your best chance is chemotherapy. And then you go, well, what, what, what chance have I got with that? Hardly any chance. Like, you're probably going to die. Mm. Now, that tells me that billions billions of dollars are being, and pounds are being spent and made on this year, right? Now, if you was a business manager or, or someone doing a loan in a bank, right, mm -hmm. um, and you were saying, look, this is how we're going to deal with this situation here, right, um, and it's going to cost this much, what would you say? You're going to say, hell no, yeah, yeah. find another way to do it because mm. I ain't putting all these billions <laughs> yeah, into, yeah, on the yeah. table. Mm. Yeah. So that tells me that like, whether it's they've got it wrong by mistake or whether they've purposely got it wrong, whatever it is, they've got it wrong. Mm. It's a flawed and, and, system. And it, it's as simple as that. Mm. So we don't need to get into the blame games of it all. All we need to do is look and go, what makes sense? Billions of, 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 of dollars being spent and nothing being achieved. Mm. So, so... The only other way to go is, if you ask me, the people that are actually healing people on a regular basis, mm -hmm. which is the people with cannabis oils, mm -hmm. but not even just cannabis oils, man. You know what I'm trying to say? Because it's like, that's a, another way that like I think we're being, um, we're misleading ourselves because people go, whoa, cannabis oil, or whoa, alkaline water. Mm -hmm. And they go off half cocked like I did with, whoa, veganism. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. you know what I mean I need to be completely like vegan to be like powered up yeah, yeah. and like what generally happens is you, you kind of you've gone too far in one direction so people look and go oh yeah cannabis oil yeah well you're missing the point of that maybe there's like like maybe if you look out in nature yeah because like we come from nature yeah, yeah. that more or less everything in there will do something. Yeah, yeah. If you it's took purpose. like a leaf from like um the, the nettles, the mm. stinging nettles, they've got the most um they've got the most kind of uh mineral content in there and vitamin C and all this stuff. Okay. These are stinging nettles that go out everywhere. You could go like people talk like were you know, really scared a few months ago about food shortages. Mm. But if you really had your eyes open, yeah. Even though it's not something you're used to, it's not just generally like a five star meal, but mm -hmm. you could go and get stinging nettles. This is like people eat them. So Do you know what I mean? And now, one of the most nutritious things on the planet. This is another way I think people are being blagged here yeah, because they go, Oh, look at all these like acai berries and all these different like things like soursop and everything mm -hmm. that comes from tropical. Mm -hmm. But there's money involved in that. It's like you're saying that. The nature around you that's local to your environment hasn't got something that mm. can that can uh, nourish you and also help your system to move and keep moving because I believe the body requires movement um, and because it's a water-based system, mm -hmm. um, if the water's generally um, working and functioning right, the molecules are um, as you know balanced and well looked after as possible. Um, then you're gonna have a, you know, a cycling system. Mm -hmm. that, even if you like, I haven't, you know, I ain't looked into things like I ain't looked at things through an electron microscope. But just think of like molecules. They're circles, mm -hmm. right? They're, you 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 are told that molecules are circles, yeah. So water molecules think if they're laden with minerals that are inorganic, like metals and rocks and dirt. In, these are inorganic minerals. If they've got like heavy metals in there and all this kind of stuff that's messing about with the with the with the molecules, um, and then there's all a bunch of other stuff like um, like plasticized oils that are in the butter and in the biscuits and all these different things yeah which we're eating on a constant basis. If all this stuff's just like messing with your system, it ain't cycling. Mm -hmm. It's not moving. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And this system needs to move. It's like you've got like tubes that are akin to like drainage in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and it needs to move. It's got to move. It's got to keep flushing. This is probably the only reason why people are getting away with put, trashing their bodies so much is because a lot of people are on the gym thing now. Yeah, you need yeah, to move yeah. in it. Yeah, move, but um, yeah. 
you can like what I show on my website is you can accelerate the the whole thing by doing certain uh, techniques like cleaning up the water, um, fasting for as long as you can on water or juices, mm. and just using the inorganic like basically geometry like because that geometry of the food just basically using organic foods to heal your body because it's 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 symbiotic with your body you come from nature you don't mm. come from like um a lab laboratory yeah which yeah. is where all these foods even well, the vegans from. the vegans are dealing with a lot of them vegan burgers which are made in a laboratory so even that's a, a bit of a like it's a it's a trick do you know what i mean it's like um or it's like uh it's just a bit of a like we, we're seeing a, a big picture um like instead of going uh it's more to it than just veganism we everyone just wants to go that way or like like for instance with the with the 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 cannabis oil everyone wants to go towards cannabis oil mm -hmm. thinking that that's the only thing there's never a, one thing depending on your situation it might be a bunch of things in it yeah, cannabis oil yeah, might not yeah. work for you because yeah, like yeah. There might be another area what you need to fix. Do you know what I'm trying to, to say? So, so it's, it's very, very, like I'm just let you speak because it's very insightful. You're telling me you're dropping a lot of gems that yeah. me and a lot of viewers won't know about. Do you know what I mean? So obviously you say you do a lot of research. Did you do any research into COVID and the pandemic and all of that kind of stuff? Do you have any views around it? I never. Do you know what it is? You, it's not like research, any because we're always getting videos now and we just watch these videos. So I wouldn't really call it research and that. Mm. Just, obviously, yeah, it depends on it. Like if you're sitting there taking notes and that. But for me, I didn't really research it because like whatever's going on, I don't know what it is, but I just never believed it from the start. And that's mm. because I, 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 I feel that if the whatever was and the worst thing was to happen to me now yeah i feel that i am so comfortable with my knowledge of how the body works uh, and how to um get it get the immune system functioning on a on just a completely higher active on a different level mm. that i wouldn't go to the doctors okay. so to me coronavirus is nothing mm. i look at coronavirus and i'm like it doesn't matter to me because mm -hmm. even if I get that coronavirus, yeah, I'm just gonna I'm gonna just fast for a few days mm -hmm. on on water, yeah, and I yeah. know yeah that however long it takes for me to get rid of them that that virus, it's going, it's it's gone. It's as simple as that. Um, now, there's that's just one thing I can show you. There's a bunch of things that I'm certain of from me looking into because I've looked at all the different modalities. I've looked at different people who say different things about how we can um assist our own body at healing because you your body is i could let's say like i'm a herbalist yeah mm. and and you come to me and you say whatever like i need some assistance i can't heal you only you can heal you you've mm. just luckily enough come to me intuitively mm. to get the information on how to heal yourself yeah, because yeah, yeah. you that, that's how powerful that that's the biggest thing that we somehow seem to overlook is that our bodies heal themselves. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like you, you cut your finger. You don't have to say, "Please heal." It just does it. So, what makes you think all of this? What's going on inside isn't that doing that same thing? What makes you think that even cancer, yeah, mm -hmm. isn't actually? Um, now, this might sound crazy to some people. How about if cancer was your friend? Because mm -hmm. cancer's actually trying to show you, like, look, you need to stop doing something yeah, yeah. yeah and if you stop doing whatever it is that you need to stop doing mm. then everything's going to be cool yeah yeah you understand yeah. what i'm trying yeah. to say because the people who actually in my opinion know about what cancer is they always say cancer is a a, a reaction that is an indicator of something it's saying yo let's back away from the chain smoking mm. all, all, all the time yeah. and let's maybe drink some more water mm. quite a lot of it mm. uh, and stop eating fake food yeah like yeah. that's what it's doing mm. and but people don't accept that it's like that, that yo it's you who's doing this mm. you know what i mean you know you've probably seen it you see many people that they got cancer but they still want to keep smoking yeah yeah like it's in normal. the hospital yeah, you know what I'm yeah, trying yeah, to say? yeah um and and i'm not saying it's easy to stop doing these things yeah 
Um, unfortunately, we've been like we've been encouraged to, you know, uh, do all of this stuff and and made to think that it's all like yeah, d just keep doing it, don't worry about it. And when 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 you need to fix it, come see the doctor. Mm. But so how can I explain to make it um, seem? Uh, to get you know to get it into the minds of the people that are listening now. So, all right, check this out. So, you see, you see, you see your car now. Mm -hmm. If you got a, you're driving your car and it says check engine oil. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's an indicator that the engine oil needs changing, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So, like people who say, say like, oh yeah, no, no, cancer's not doing like it's not helping us. Like it's not an indicator of something's wrong. Like, let's let's say that 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 you're because what what they look to do is they look to get rid of the symptoms. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, this yeah. is what they look to do with most things in like they want to burn things, burn the cancer cells out, cut it out, poison you with the chemicals, all this stuff. Yeah, right. And hopefully that symptom there, which is a cancerous cell, causing your body to have all these problems, hopefully will kill that cancer cell. But that's a symptom. Mm. Now, dealing with a symptom is not dealing with the root cause. If you eat, like, if your engine oil lights come on and you you go, oh, let's take out the engine oil light so mm. we can't see that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see what I'm trying to say? Yeah, now, yeah. Well, you haven't got rid of the problem, though. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I'm trying to say? So I'm not saying none of them, these chemos and all this stuff never work because um, clearly they do, but I even got my own theory on that and it seems as if um, the ones that it does kill, right, that's basically the placebo effect, okay. which is basically like your mind thinks that the ke ke chemo works, mm. that that it's the best chance of, of you beating the disease or de neutralizing the disease. And um, so you've, you, 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 you've healed yourself because that's how powerful I believe the mind the is. The mind is, you know what I'm I, to say? Uh, yeah, I completely agree with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, obviously I've got a few more questions for you. So obviously you've had like, you've, you, I think you've had quite an inspirational journey to go through what you went through. And obviously, you know, you, you hold your hands up, you've done the crime, you've done the time, do you know what I mean? Now you've, you've fully reformed, I can tell by your energy, your knowledge, yeah, you know yeah, what yeah. I mean? You're on a, a oh, you're on a, a, a positive path now. Obviously, things come in between that course and it but they're the kind of things that we learn the lessons from if, mm. if, if i'm right but what is your, your so what is your purpose now what's your goal what is the legacy the lasting legacy that you'd like to leave on this earth you might have I'm a not, few i'm not gonna lie bro do you, do you know what it is it's so sorry to put in like it's just no, like <laughs> this coronavirus things taught me that like you, you just gotta just keep it moving and just flow and just do whatever you, you however you feel, man. At the time, like I try and not even like think too far ahead. Mm -hmm. true, like, true. Um, even the path that I'm on now, doing what I'm doing, right? Because I think I went on a tangent. Sometimes I do that. That's how my mind works. Yeah. Um, but so you, I think you said you know, is this something that you're passionate about and blah blah blah? Yeah. Um, not blah blah blah. You no, know, no, no, say, no, no, like, no, So no. so so it's like, I'll be honest, bro. As even though I did get excited about veganism and whatever and vegetables and there's these super fuels that are amazing, you can put them in your body. Yeah. They'll charge you up and like you'll 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 be like strong in the gym. Yeah, and it's all organic stuff. Yeah. I was passionate about it, but more just excited like wow, buzzing with fan this stuff yeah. and it's kind of like a panacea kind of like a, a youth serum kind of thing because okay. I'm 37 man and I don't feel like I look it one no, bit yeah. but it's like I kind of didn't think that this was what I was going to be doing I just wanted to do music mm -hmm. do you know what I mean I, I, I wanted to do music yeah but like life came at me in a way that was quite like it was like intense Okay. Because it was like, wow, well, I've got to, I've got to get achieve things and get things done, and I, I don't know, shall I do music? Shall I do promoting? Shall I do DJing? I've always been one of these guys with a lot of things that I want to do. Mm. How do I decide which one to do? And then the the coronavirus thing came along, and because I know for a fact, yeah, that 
the whole medical system, unless they're fixing your leg, let's say you bust your leg, yeah, and they set it and, or like they got to do some surgery on you and fix you up. Even then your body's healing itself. They're just setting it, <laughs> right? To, yeah. to setting it in place so it heals itself. Mm. Um, I, I, I just felt compelled to start this website. Okay. I wouldn't, it's mad because I wouldn't even say it's, it's a compassion. It's more of a like, you know what? I can't believe everyone's just scared of this like just crappy little virus yeah. Mm. which if you knew the things that i know like yeah, there's a yeah. bunch of things that i know then you wouldn't even give it one bit of like uh you wouldn't give it one bit of energy you mm -hmm. wouldn't blink about it because you'd just be like if i get it yeah this is what i'll do i'll know yeah, exactly yeah. what to do and it's not even just fasting there's a bunch of things you can do so i kind of just kind of got forced into to the path so more like i just moved based on I'm sick of people like, you know what I mean? Like going on about this stupid coronavirus. And Being the scare monger is, than that. Yeah, but yeah. then the mad thing is it started growing and growing and snowballing something bigger than I actually thought it was going to do. And here we are now. Mm. So I suppose in terms of the website, my goal would just be to just empower as, as many people as they can into being in charge of their immune system because um, I definitely feel that um, the things that I'm teaching on the website will show you how to be in, char in charge and in control put a control mechanism on how um strong your immune system is and and and, and how well it works well, it's, 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 it's a fact like there's things that i can show you that um once you've tried it you'll be like yo that worked because i saw the results of mm. it so um but i think you you i think it could be a bit of a calling but i feel like it's it's very very important because even mm. myself nutritional wise i don't know as much as what i should the young people that i work with they kind of go to school and their the nutrition isn't right but then yeah, they're yeah. told that they have to concentrate for six hours but how are they meant to concentrate with them and they haven't got the right fuel to mm. fuel their brain to concentrate do you know what i mean i used to go yeah. to school in the morning and sometimes i never used to have breakfast do you know what i mean yeah. it always used to make me feel funny then i got older and realized i was lactose and intolerant do you know what i mean mm. but at the time i was going to school in an empty stomach and i realized the difference is when i go to work or whatever if i have a banana or whatever in the morning i realized the difference of when i get up and talk to if i've been in a rush and just had a cup of tea yeah, so i yeah. feel like it's very important that even, even as a society whether it's just schools or even adults that we understand what we put in like we are what we eat and it we mm. what we're putting in nutri nutritional wise is going to benefit us do you know what i mean or it's going to hinder us so yeah. i think it's it's really really important and i can't wait to look at your website and kind of even not even for myself and for my son and for my nephews and little things that i can think of oh if i can put that in place for them mm. and I'll, you know what i mean i'll be able to track from them as younger and up upwards yeah, yeah. what the benefits were do you know what mm. i'm saying so i feel like it's been a very very like um eye-opening and very for me it's been very educational so i feel like it's going to be very educational for viewers and inspirational because the start of your journey but in terms of like so you said your goals and and, and your, your purpose and your passion and that is going into the to the website but you say you have the music side as well so mm. don't want to i don't want to leave that out so yeah. um we can just say that and then we'll do one more we'll have yeah. one more question so uh. the music side of things yeah, like just I, I, I was, a bit more. Cause yeah, when I was in jail, I started to like make beats, mm -hmm. and uh, in my head I was like, "Why well, am I making beats?" Like there was a negative, like thought in there saying, "I ain't gonna be no cold cocks on when I get yeah, out." And yeah. that's like a pipe dream, innit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but then something inside me said, "Nah, just make your own event." And then if you make your own event, you don't have to worry about like trying to ask nobody mm -hmm. if you can DJ. Mm -hmm. You just DJ even just for like. 50 people if, yeah. if it's that it's still mm. like it was more the experience yeah, it weren't yeah. like I was trying to be a famous person or nothing yeah. um, so I was g going after that and then I came out and uh, like immediately I went straight into putting a uh, house music events on and it okay. was very tough because in um, in Digworth uh, where uh, all the house music events are it's very clicky if you mm. don't know who you are yeah. and they haven't like seen you on the scene they don't want to let you like, in. They're like, who's this? You know mm. what I mean? Like, that is, that and I, I'd like enough. to say that's what it's like in all the music genres. It's terrible when you're yeah. a new bass or if you've got something about you. Yeah, they deem you as a threat more than 
come on, let's. It's for me. I always see it as it's about the fans. It's about the people that come and pay their money. It's about entertaining them. It's not about oh, you've got to, you've got peak slot. Oh, I'm a warm up DJ. Oh, yeah. There's so much ego in it. It's yeah, terrible. It's but lot, carry on, bro. Yeah, it's just um, I suppose it took a, it took me a while to get you know my foot in the door because mm-hmm. people you weren't maybe I think people project their kind of um, insecurities or whatever because they go it's it's almost as if like. Who's this guy I think he is? Mm. I've never ever met him. Yeah, and yeah. I just want to come, because I just came straight out of prison. <laughs> like, w- walking into, like, big events and saying, like, going up to the geezer saying, yo, w- what's going on in here? Like, mm. you the guy who runs this, can I do a collab with you on that? <laughs> Give yeah? me a phone, man. Because that's yeah. how I'm like, I'm yeah, on that yeah, networking, yeah. meeting people face-to-face. And, and they're face. looking at it's me like, yo, I don't man. know you. <laughs> like, like, yeah. we don't, like, we don't do collab. Like, they give me the number and that, and then I'll phone them up. Like, now nah, we don't do collabs and that stuff. But did you keep going to their events and keep, yeah, I kept keep showing going, up? Yeah, I kept yeah, showing up. Yeah, you got to be that, persistent, yeah. man. Mm, and, then, and then just kept doing it, man. And, and um, yeah, Fad Eye Collective, man, it kept, it, like, it kept going for a bit. It's still there. We can do it. Sorry, like, that's, what, that's what it's called, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, pe- people Fad, love Fad it. Collective. Um, but do you know what it is? It's like, I went that, like I said, I went down that spiritual thing where I was, like, thinking of, like, mystical things. And mm-hmm. um, I realised that, you know what, it's probably, like, there's, maybe there's something to it, you know, you, you go to sleep and you dream and you can see things, so there must be, like, an inner kind of vision. Mm-hmm. Um, but I went a bit, like, so deep into it that I started to even question that, do I even want to do raves? Because, mm. like, it's, like, look around, like, it's mm. all, like... I start start to think this is all negative energy yeah, and all the this frequency stuff. Is yeah, off, and then, yeah. so then I just I, I come away from that third eye stuff to be honest. <laughs> yeah, with you, you know yeah. What I mean? give me another first, bro, man. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. you have to go through that journey, but then realize that yeah, wow, yeah. this is really intense. Yeah, and I've, yeah. I feel like the balance between physical and spiritual is hard sometimes because when you focus on the one, you miss the little gems that are in the physical realm. If you focus on the spiritual realm, you probably take you away and make you not want to do certain things in mm. the physical. So it's about finding that balance and what works for you, and it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Well, I suppose to say that um, I was listening to this guy the other day and, and he's, um, what's his name? Ram Das or something like that. Okay. And he, 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 I think he just says, once, once you know, once you start going down this kind of like wonderings of what how the mind works, and if there's something like um, you see more expansive, more, yeah. he says you you, you 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 get it when you realise that, like you just gotta just deal with where you're at and be in the world. Yeah, and forget, yeah, yeah. Forget like that I, side I, of it. I, I, I allow it to just come naturally and instead of seeking, seeking because sometimes yeah. when you seek for something, you know what I mean, what you find is probably not what you were seeking for. So if mm. you allow it to happen naturally because it's signs, and it? I'm guessing mm. you, you see a lot of signs, you, you get a lot of signs and sometimes you might think, oh, what's that about? Or you keep seeing something, keep yeah, seeing something. Yeah. And then when you get that moment, you're like, oh, it connects. And then it's like a pass go thing, isn't it? But- get some mad experiences, man, like deja vus and that. Mm. But, um, I suppose it's just like, I suppose just not take, don't take it too seriously. I think life is, uh, the highest thing in life is joy, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Like uh, the highest like, thing good, like yeah, is man. joy. Like mm-hmm. just like buzzing, like, yo, you mm-hmm. know, like got out of jail, went to these raves and that. Um, you know, had amazing times going down London. So then to be in a space where, because I was wanting to be spiritual, yeah, I was thinking, oh, I don't know if I should do this. Mm. Then that that's what made me to realise, yo, you're going too far with this. Yeah, like, yeah. You, you've gone, like, too far in that direction. Mm. So it's just like, you know what I mean? Just Then it just makes you pull back a bit. Well, what about, so friendships and stuff like that? Like, when you was on the journey of, like, seeking for more, did that have an effect on the friends the friendships that you had like the kind of maybe people who you knew wasn't for you or wasn't part of your journey but you just thought oh he's my pal anyway when Mm. you started to understand certain things because i went through the stage where i'm telling my friends because you're excited and when you learn something new and you go and tell your friend and they're like you're weird you are Mm. it makes you feel like raw like you're not on my frequency then because what I'm telling you, if you told me that, I'd probably be like, raw, maybe I want to... Well, some people are kind of not ready for that kind mm. of um, level of knowledge or understanding that 
some people just think, oh, maybe it is me then. Whereas I was always comfortable and understood. Do you know what I mean? Like, did you kind of have that stage where it's like you say you shed your skin and you, you mm. peel that onion and you realise who's for you and who isn't for you? Yeah, yeah, did you have that stage? Um. Yeah, I suppose it, 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 it can send you on a bit of a lonely kind of like kind of you, you can be lonely in it because mm. you, you, it's just like you're latching onto something that's kind of like everything you're talking like you're looking at all these things and these like videos and all this stuff and then everything you're talking about most people are not even hearing or seeing that one bit of it they're mm. just like what, what what are you on about yeah, so yeah. that can send you down that road but uh, uh, for me I started to eat, like I said, the veganism, I think that's a cult. Like, uh, there's a lot of things that I'm looking at now, all of it, yeah, and I just say, you know what? It's it's all there to, like, just basically, just, it's there to put you in a box, mm -hmm. the same way, like, religion had put you in a box, mm -hmm. the same way school or the mm -hmm. government, Sexuality, whatever, yeah. All them yeah, it's there to, to, to so, you, so you go, I'm like this, and you know and everyone else is like that or whatever yeah but then i think that that there is blocking it's blocking many of us mm -hmm. blocking the communities from from, yeah, from yeah. merging in it and, and we're already we're already like in a bit of a situation now because obviously everyone wants to stay away from each other because of this mm. virus thing yeah, yeah so yeah. i think he's doing a good job man and, and um i kind of i just think you know what you you you, you just got to do your best at whatever it is that you you, you feel good about. It makes you feel good, any? Mm. Do you know what I mean? As long as what you do that's making you feel good mm. is good for yourself and good for others, then like, mm. that's it, innit? And if the ones that don't understand, like, I've got to that stage where it's like, okay, their moment hasn't come yet. But then mm. there's been times where my friends have been kind of like, yo, bro, like, I need to talk to you. You know everything that you used to say to me before? Yeah, it's starting yeah. to happen, man. What did you do? What did you... And I'm like, oh, okay. And then that's good then, because I can say, look, what I done might not work for you, bro. But yeah, yeah, these yeah. are the kind of things that, do you know what I mean? And and, and like I'm saying, I swayed away from the whole conspiracy theory, third eye, this and that, trying to mm. reach all these different realms and just understand that this realm alone mm. needs me and, need, and, and, and it's got a lot of work that I need to do. So I need yeah, to focus yeah, yeah. on, that's when I was telling you about why I haven't concentrated on the pandemic is because I'm not higher up and there's nothing that I can do or say to anybody to change the circumstance that mm. we're in. We've got somebody that comes on the screen and tells us what tier, whatever we're in mm. and, and we have to abide by that. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's all just going the way it's going to go, ain't it? And, um, you know, if you like, like I said, the things that I've just spoke to you about, about like, um, well, I, I believe um, whether or not this is a real or man-made thing or whatever it is, I um, am very confident in, in the authority of my uh, immune system and I can show many people how to do things that will vividly change your body. Like, I'm confident in that. You tell most people now who are walking around wearing the mask that, for them, they're, they're just, their brain will just seize up. They'll, mm. they'll, they'll, or they'll just, they'll look at you as if you're completely mad. Like, no, yeah. you, like, the, someone put on the, the, these memes, there was a couple of them, that was going, oh, uh, you know, so-and-so from, like, uh, wherever thinks, like that, that because they've done a bit of research yeah, that they know more than the doctors one. and I'm yeah. like so this is the programming this is this is what's interesting about the programming of the mind because like I said I, I pulled away from all that spiritual stuff here but the programming of the mind is a real thing because people think because they hear a buzzword like science yeah and degrees and doctors and all this yeah that that's the gold standard that's the ultimate like well because a doctor says it to be all and end like all. what you're saying is completely rubbish mm -hmm. yeah because the doctor says that <laughs> what you're saying is crap yeah yeah, yeah. now but how come like it, it, even the person who you're looking down at and going oh yeah this person's like an idiot yeah how come they know probably know more people that's been healed of cancer than you because they know people that deals with cannabis oil and probably mm. learned certain things that yeah. you're not willing to look at yeah because yeah. as soon as you hear the science thing that's it 
the, the firewall goes yeah, up in it. So. Clouded by the vision, ain't it? Mm. Okay, then. So last the last question now, because I feel like we, we we've you've touched upon a lot, but I feel thing. like we've with what you've says, I feel like we definitely need to. Um, taking the website mm. and start doing some of the practices do you know what I mean yeah, yeah, I yeah. feel like even if we've got a few I won't call them guinea pigs but a few people to do it and then they can see I think that'd be good yeah, to kind yeah, of yeah. like because I'm guessing you've already showed some people and people have already jumped on the journey with you do you know what I mean mm. but I feel like a like a something to like a recap or maybe me and Cole and the team kind of take upon it, and then we can come back and speak to you again and, and say how it made us feel, what yeah. changes that, that we felt, do you know what I mean? But, yeah, but the last thing to leave on is, I ask everybody that comes on the show this, is basically, do you have like a, a, a positive quote or affirmation that, that you kind of live by or kind of ethos? Um, Nah, I just, uh, just do what makes you feel good, man. Do what makes you feel yeah, good. That's yeah, it. That alone, bro, is a good yeah, one. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Short and sweet. Mm. Do what makes you feel good. Whatever feeling. You, we all have intuition. Some mm. people, and a conscious, some people don't choose to tap into it. And that's mm. why they go off on a sandin. But to the people that are tapped into it, you know inside when something's wrong. Yeah. Now you have the choice then. If you're going to commit and do the badness or mm-hmm. you're going to pull back and be like, no, that's wrong. I know the consequence to that. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. We all know that. So it's like you say, it? We, we have the choice. And then if we make that choice, it's to face the consequence. And that's the best way to finish it, isn't it, brother? Yeah, man. Yeah? It's but respect, man. And if people want to find you on socials and stuff like that or, um, or your yeah, website so it's, again. Um, full underscore spectrum 2020. Okay. And... Um, yeah, spectrumsuperfuels.com. Okay, and and it'll be all in the description as well for all the viewers and the YouTubers and all that kind of stuff and people on Facebook and Instagram. So make sure you tune in and check it out because I definitely will be, do you know what I mean? It's your boy, Nathaniel James, host with the most. Full spectrum. Full spectrum. Ow. Okay.